Talitha Caney, the Reef Watch Coordinator for South Australia and welcome to our video blog series. The species you will see today are found on our intertidal reefs here in South Australia. And today we have Peter Hunt, our intertidal expert, talking to us about trochus or top shells. When we're surveying South Australian reefs, we regularly come across trochus shells or top shells. This is a large family of small herbivorous mollusks, snails. They are not well studied, but they are very important to our ecology. We often see trochus shells in rock pools. If they are dead, they are usually inhabited with hermit crabs. It's one of their favorite species to make home. Uh, but normally, if we're walking along an ocean beach on York Peninsula, we will see hundreds of trochus shells they usually fall off the kelp that blows in on the winter storms. More active at night, trochus shells are grazers. Again, they eat algae on the rocks and they also help to control the microalgae on the strands of seagrass, keeping the seagrass healthy. We regularly find trochus living on the seagrass and on rocks in very large quantities and for this reason they have a major influence on the health of our ecosystems. Trochus eat algae and microalgae on the stems and leaves of seagrass. When we find them on the rocks, they are usually grazing on the blue-green algae, the black slimy algae, which, uh, if there are no trochus, will get out of control. Okay, on this rock and sharing the rock surface are some trochus shells. These are the ostracoclea. There are several species that we survey as part of Reef Watch. And you can tell the trochus snails because they have a thumbnail type operculum. That's the little trapdoor. And it's like a little bit of horny brown material and that helps protect the flesh of the animal. While we have many types of trochus here in South Australia, about 50 odd species, none of them are very large. Here I have an example of the commercial trochus from Northern Australia. This is harvested and farmed for its flesh and also for its pearl. Many years ago, buttons for shirts were made of these and it was a big industry. Now it's been replaced with plastic. There are many different types of trochus. It's a super family. What we've done today is to divide them up and show you the different major groups. Typically the trochus shell or top shell is this pyramid shape with a flat round bottom. The, ex the external surfaces are usually highly coloured and internally is high quality pearl. While we're on the subject of shape and type, be aware that the trochus shell are closely related to the turban shells which we have seen today in the rock pools. So here is an example of a turban shell, here is an example of a trochus shell. As you can see they're a very similar shape and the main way to tell them apart is by the operculum, the trapdoor. Just under the water there is a turbo undulata. This is our green warrener turban and this is a grazing snail, very common on these rocks and this is a nice healthy specimen. Now the turbo snail has a trapdoor called an operculum and as I close, I ask him to close his door there you can see the white operculum. This offers protection from predators on the beach here. These snails tend to live just below the waterline just under the sand exactly where we found him and I'm sure if we look around we'll find lots more. So here I have a selection of trochus or top shells. Uh, as you can see, they're very diverse in color and form. To start with, we have the common ostracoclea. There's uh, three or four species that are found on most rocky reefs along our beaches. Then we have the clanculus group and South Australia is very rich and we have about 10 species of clanculus. And the last major group in shape are these elongated uh, phasneotrochus. These are very highly polished 
elongate and quite different and I've polished one off there with some pearl to show you the inside. Lastly we have these straight sided top shells. These are referred to as calliostoma. Now this group are not grazing trochus, they're actually a predator and for that reason scientists have recently put them into their own group now called Calliostomatidae. But up to a year or two ago, they were all trochus shells. While we're on the subject of the Calliostomatidae, there's a rather interesting species that lives just down by the Coorong. This species is actually a left-handed shell. The technical name for this is Sinistral. All snail shells found along the coast, except for a very few microscopic species, are naturally right-handed. This species in particular is a naturally occurring left-handed species and is the only one that you will find on the beach. Trochus are one of our largest groups of small snails. For this reason, they're common on most beaches. And when they occur, they occur in very large numbers. So it's regularly noticed that in the shell grit, there will be hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of trochus shells. As we go walking along the beach, in certain areas you'll find lines of shell grit. Sometimes they're at the tide marks, sometimes they're just piles of random areas where uh, the sand is a little bit more coarse. If we take a close look at the shell grit, uh, as the name suggests, most of it is broken shell. But if you have a magnifying glass or microscope, and take some of this into a petri dish and have a look. It's usually full of many fully grown miniature species that most of us don't usually see. Any pile of shell grit on the beach can be a mixture of many things. There are a lot of miniature shells, there are broken large shells, there are also parts of shells, parts of sea urchins, and one of the uh, lingering things are the very strong operculums from the turbo shells. Thanks Peter for sharing your knowledge with us. If you'd like to find out more about Reef Watch, check out our Facebook or Instagram page or find us on our website.